So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to take what we previously built in the last video, check that out if you haven't already seen it, where we created the archive page for our WooCommerce site and we added in the advanced custom fields, custom information, things like the engine size and those kinds of details. Now we're going to move on to creating that template for the actual product details itself. So if we click on any of these vehicles. We'll hop over now to our custom design page. Now this is relatively simple and straightforward, but the principles are more important than the design I'm demonstrating. Once you understand them, you can build pretty much whatever you want to. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can recreate a page like this from scratch. So first thing we need to do is make sure we've got a couple of features enabled. So let's hop over into Elementor and into Settings, come over to the Features section, and make sure you've got the Flexbox container enabled. We need to have that. You can, if you also want to use the nested elements, and I would recommend the grid container if you don't already have it and you want to follow along with the previous video. With those active and set up, we can now come into the template section and into theme builder. And we're going to create a template now for the single product. So what we're going to do is click on plus next to single product. And that will then open up the library of pre-built templates. We don't want to use these, so we're going to click on the X to close those down. So what we're going to do is we're going to get into some good habits. We're going to make sure we name this template before we start building anything. So we're going to come to the cog in the bottom corner into settings, and you can see this is giving this a title that means absolutely nothing to most people. So we're going to call this default. So now we can see exactly what this particular template actually relates to. Let's come back out of this. Let's go over to our little Rubik's Cube, and this will show us now all of the different widgets we have. And you'll see that we have all these product widgets enabled at the top. This is where we can access all the standard features that we have on a typical WooCommerce product template page, things like the breadcrumbs, the product title, and so on. We're going to use some of those, and we're going to use some of our own custom ACF data. But first of all, let's go and take a look at what we need to create. This is our hero section where we've got the category, and we've also got what car it is we're currently looking at, and we've got this image in the background before we fade into the details. Let's create that first. So we're using the experimental feature, so we're using the container. So all we need to do is come down until we find the container. We're going to simply click and drag that into our designer. We've now added in our container. So with that selected, we're going to come over and just choose the minimum height. So we're going to just use the option to switch this over to VH or viewport height. And then we can set a basically a percentage of that viewport height. So for this example, we're going to set this. We'll start off with about 40. That will give us a nice header section, at which point we can actually put that image in the background. To do that, we're going to come over to Style. We're going to open up the background type and click on Classic. And inside there, we can, if we want to, choose an image. However, you'll see we get this little database icon, and that allows us to choose dynamic data. We'll click on Dynamic Tags, and we'll just simply choose Featured Image. That will now pull in the featured image of any of the vehicles that we're currently looking at. So now what we can do is we can set the position and so on for this. We're going to set this to be center center. We're going to make sure there's no repeat applied to this and display size. We're going to set to be cover. That will now take up the full space horizontally and vertically inside our hero section. Now, obviously, this is a little bit too bright. And if we put anything over the top of it, it's going to look a little bit silly. So what we're going to do is we're going to close the background and we're going to open up the background overlay option and choose the option for a gradient. Now we can set our gradient details, our starting color, our ending color, the location, the angle, and all those good things. So first of all, at the top, it doesn't really matter what color we set. So I'm going to choose my global colors. I'm going to choose the main BG. And we're going to do exactly the same for the second color, main BG. And you're probably wondering, why am I doing that? Well, this is the reason why. We're going to set this to be opacity of 100%. And you see now everything is basically gone to the same as the background color. We're going to open up our first background color. We're going to select it, and we're going to adjust the opacity and set that to be nothing. So what we're doing is we're going to have a natural gradient of transparent right the way down to our background color. Now, if you want to, you can adjust your angle. You can adjust your location. And as we do that, you can see that adjusts the actual location of the gradient itself. I'm going to set that somewhere around 85, because I want this to fade out into the background so the car just kind of slowly fades away. Now, you can easily tweak these to your own taste. You may want to sort of have the top also covered a little bit. We could come back in, and we could adjust the top color to kind of give us that slight more of a fade kind of effect. Next up, we need to drop in the information that we want. So let's come back over into our Rubik's Cube, and we're going to grab our product title. We're going to drag that into our top section. And you see that places that in the top left-hand corner. So all we need to do is come to our container, select it, come over now into our layout, and we can use the Flexbox options to control exactly how this is positioned. 
Now, by default, this has been set up to be a row, which is perfectly fine. That then gives us the justify content option. So if we click on the center, that'll put it centered on the vertical. And now we can go ahead and set our align items to the center. There we go. So now we've got the title in it. All we're going to do is select that title, come over to our style option. We're going to leave this as the H1 because this is the primary heading on the page. You can see H H1 is set on there. Come into our style, into our typography. I'm going to leave the text as it is. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to bump up the size on this to let's just say something like 75. That'll look pretty cool. You can again style this to be in keeping with your design. Next up, if we take a look back, we want to put the category inside here as well. So let's go and do that next. Let's come back to our Rubik's Cube. And for this, we need to go ahead and just use another natural standard heading. So we're going to drag that above our title. If we can't get it stacked up there, we can simply do it on the right hand side in our layers panel. We're going to set that. We're going to set that H2 is perfectly fine. So we have that hierarchy of information. You can see alignment, everything is all set up on there. We're going to click on the dynamic tags. We're going to scroll through until we find the option for WooCommerce. And in there, you can see we've got product terms. We can select that. And then we can click on the little wrench icon. And if we need to make any changes to the taxonomy, we can do that inside here. So we leave that set as product category. That's perfectly fine. If we want to make any changes, we can do. And then we're going to come over into our style. And we're just going to style the text the way that we want. So I'm going to change this color. We're going to set this to be something like our global white, like so. And we're going to come into our typography settings. And we're just going to make this just a little bit smaller doesn't need to be quite as prominent and we're going to make it a little lighter. And we're also going to go ahead and adjust our letter spacing just to kind of stretch this out a little bit. There we go. That looks pretty cool. So now we've got our hero section in. We've pulled in some initial dynamic data and now we're ready to move on to creating the actual product content itself or the vehicle details. So the next thing we need to do is go ahead and add another container underneath and this is going to contain that information. So let's come back over into our elements drag our container over, drop that into our design, and there's our container now for our content. Let's make a little bit of space above it. So go into advanced, and we're going to unlink these options, and we're going to put a bit of space at the top, let's say 50 pixels for now. Obviously, you can use any values you want. If you want to work with percentages, Ms, Rems, those kinds of things, you can do right the way down to completely custom ones. For ease, we're sticking with pixels just to make life easy so everybody can understand exactly how this all works. Okay, so next up, we need to go ahead and do what we've got here, which is to have the image on the left hand side and our vehicle details and button and so on on the right hand side. There's lots of different ways you can do it. And what we're going to do is we're going to come into our options, drag and drop two containers in. So we're going to choose the first one. We'll right click then and duplicate that. And we now have two containers stacked on top of each other. So select our parent container. All we're going to do is come into the layout option and we're going to choose the row horizontal. We'll click on that and you can see now that puts those inner containers 50%, 50% ready for our content. When we're at it, let's make our lives a little easier because all these just containers mean nothing. So a bit of good housekeeping. Let's double click on the first container and we're just going to call this hero container. And we'll click the other one and we'll just call this details container just so we can kind of see what these mean if you want to name the inner containers you can do so we could just change this and call this images and we could call this details so now we can see at a glance what any of these containers actually mean and what they relate to okay so let's select our first container which is our left hand container come back over to a rubik's cube and from our product options we're simply going to grab the product images and pop that inside there you see that now pulls in the main image. And if we had multiple images in a gallery, they would be listed underneath so we could control how they look, any kind of spacing, all those kinds of things. And you see you can show and set up any kind of values you want inside the left hand styling and advanced panels. We don't need to set anything. We're going to leave it as it is. Now, if we take a look over on our original design, you can see we've got the manufacturer, the price, the short details, and then we've got these custom icons underneath and information about the vehicle engine, those kinds of things. So let's do that next. Let's start off with the manufacturer. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back over to our Rubik's Cube and we're going to scroll through until we find the option for our heading. Drag that over into the right hand container. And what we're going to do is we're going to change this over to a, let's kind of set this because this isn't particularly that important. We're going to set this to be a div. And then we're going to come into our dynamic data. We're going to select it and we're going to scroll right the way through until we get to the option for our product terms one more time. Open that up. Click on our wrench icon, 
and change the taxonomy to our manufacturers. Like I said earlier, this is our custom post type that we set up and associated that with all of our vehicles that contains the manufacturer of each vehicle. Again, if you want to see how all this is done, check out the previous video. It covers everything for you. We'll select manufacturers. That will update and it says categories Mercedes. That doesn't make a lot of sense. So we're going to come down to the advanced, we're going to change categories, and we're going to put in manufacturer. And there we go. Once you do that, you see that now updates, and we can go ahead and we can style this. So we're going to change our text color. We'll set that to be white. We'll also just drop the opacity down a little bit so it's not so in your face. This is a nice way of reducing the contrast in your designs to kind of get a visual hierarchy without having to create multiples of different colors. We simply select the white, drop the opacity down a little bit, and that kind of creates a more slightly gray effect. Next up, let's come to our typography, and inside there, we're going to set this to be, let's say, 16 pixels in this example. Again, you can if you want to use M's, REM's, any of those values. So you can set up a totally fluid design if you want to. And then we're going to change this over to something like normal. Actually, let's make that 14. doesn't need to be that prominent. And we'll set this to be light 300. There we go. That looks pretty cool. So now we've set up our first piece of dynamic information. Next, we're going to grab a standard piece of info, which is our product price. And we'll pop that underneath our manufacturer details. There's our price. Again, we're going to change the colors of this and set up the sizing and so on. So we're going to set this to be white. Again, you could set global styles up for all of these values, but because we're creating a template, it's not as important with what we're doing because we want to have some customization to create visual hierarchy where needed. But good practice would be to go ahead and set up those overall styles, those global styles where and when needed. Typography is perfectly fine for everything other than the size. And we're going to make this a little bit bigger so the price stands out. There we go. We've now got a nice big price tag on there. So those are the first two things. Next up, we need to put the short description in. So again, we're simply going to come back to our Rubik's Cube, grab the option for our short description. There we go. We'll add that inside there. That'll put in the short description. And again, we're going to come into the text color. We're going to select white as our primary color. And we're going to come in and we're going to adjust the opacity of that a little bit just to sort of take the intensity of that down a little bit. And if you want to change the sizing, styling, spacing, and so on, you can do. So let's come into advanced, for example, come to our margins. We're going to unlink those. And from the top, we're going to set this. Let's try something like minus 20, just to sort of pull that up a little closer to the actual value of the vehicle. And there we go. So those are the first couple of things. Next up, we need to address these icons and this information. So how do we go about doing that? Well, this is a cool way of being able to work if you have repetitive information and it's all being pulled in from advanced custom fields or a tool like that, you know, Metabox, Jet Engine, and so on. What we're going to do, come back over, we're going to search for icon. We're going to use the icon list and drop that underneath. And that will put a standard icon list in. And we'll set this to be in line, so they're side by side. But what we can do is we can still, again, use dynamic info in here. So let's open this first one up. We've got list item number one, which doesn't make any sense. So we're going to change that. So we're going to open up the dynamic tags option one more time, scroll right the way down to our ACF fields. These are our custom fields that we've set up in the previous video. Open that up. Again, click the little wrench icon and choose the key. And the key is just the name of the ACF field that we want to access. For this, we want engine size. We'll select it. We're going to come down to advanced and we're going to put after. We're going to put CC in there. And now we want to put a custom icon in. So what we're going to do is we're going to say icon library or upload SVG. So if we choose upload SVG, I've already uploaded the ones that I wanted. So I'm going to choose the engine icon and say insert media. And that's now inserted that for us. And then you can easily come in and adjust the styling, which we'll do in a moment. So now we're going to repeat the same process for the next one, which is the fuel type. So again, we're going to click on the dynamic tag option, scroll down to ACF, open this up, click the wrench icon, click the key, choose the fuel type. And if you want to, you can put anything you want before or after. And we're going to, again, we're going to change the icons. We're going to upload an SVG. We're going to choose this icon, insert media. Now I'm going to repeat the same process for the other ones, and it's exactly the same. We're just going to repeat everything I've just shown you. Okay, so now I've put all the details that I want in. Now we can hop over and adjust the actual colors, sizes, and so on. Hop into style. If you want to put a divider in, you can do that as well. We don't want to in this case. Come into our icons. We're going to make this a little bit bigger about 20. And what we're going to do is we're going to change this over from being our kind of green accent color. We'll set this to be white. And then we're coming to hover, and we'll set the color for the hover to be our primary color. So as we hover over, we get a visual sort of feedback on that. And again, you can adjust things like the gap inside here if you want to between the actual values and the icon itself. 
And then finally, we're going to come into our text, and inside there, we're going to change our color. So again, we're going to choose our options for our main, and we're also going to just do like we've done before. We're going to select it and drop that opacity down just a little bit. So it isn't quite so in your face. There we go. We've now added in some dynamic data using the icon list option to give us nice icons to kind of have a nice visual representation of those details. So next up, let's go ahead and add in a button. Now, this is just going to be a placeholder button. You can make this whatever you want, link to a calendar, whatever you kind of want to do. So I'm just going to put this in so you can kind of see how I would build a page like this up. Pop that underneath. Set our styling. Again, you can set up your global styling. So pop in, book a test drive, you drop your link inside there, we'll set this to be a medium button. And what we're going to do is we're going to come in and choose an icon. So we choose the upload SVG option. And we're going to choose the option for this calendar and insert that. And we want to pop that to the right hand side. So we'll say after. You can adjust your spacing if you want to again, so we can make this a little bit further out. Say 10, and then we're going to pop into our styling. Quickly just coming in and setting our color scheme up using our global colors to make sure everything is in keeping. We'll set our border radius as well. I want to keep it up with all the other buttons on here. And you know, just padding and so on. And again, you've got your hover options, so you can easily style this. I'm not going to go into too much detail with this. I'm sure you can style buttons without any problem whatsoever. Okay, so we're on the home straight. The next thing we need to do, now we've popped that inside there, is go and add in the information about the description and any reviews and any custom tabs you may want to include. So let's come back out of here. Let's go back to our Rubik's Cube. What we're going to do is we're going to find the option for those tabs. Here's our product data tabs. We're simply going to drag this into this widget area, drop that inside there, and you can see that will automatically create a container, at which point we can then double click and we can adjust that. We'll call that one the description container. And now we can go ahead and style this any way that we want to. So you can customize this and do what you want with it. So now we've finished our design. And like I said, you can carry on doing as much as you want to this to get this as creative as you want. We're going to click on publish. And because this is the first time we're actually creating this template, it's going to ask us now, where do you want to display the template? This is going to be the condition. We're going to click on Add Condition, and you see this Include Products. So this is going to apply to all of the products. And that's perfectly fine in our example because we're only having vehicles. So let's click on Products, but you could, if you wanted to, have in Manufacturer, Category, Child Category, and so on. So you can get really granular, having different templates for different parts of your site based upon tags, manufacturers, those kinds of good things. For this, product is perfectly fine, and all we're going to do is click on Save and Close. But you could also, if you want to apply this in multiple instances and not globally, you can easily go in and add another condition in. And you can, if you want to, choose to exclude various different things. So you could say you wanted to exclude a particular child product category, for example, or with specific tags. There's a lot of granular control. And if you want to get rid of this, you can simply click on the X to remove that extra condition. Now we're happy with that. We'll click on Save and Close. And that is our template created, ready for us to test out. So let's go take a look at it in action. So we're back on our vehicle listing page. Let's scroll down and find a vehicle we're interested in. Let's say we like to look at this BMW Sports. Let's click on View Details, and there is our custom page that we've just created. Everything all set up the way that we want, and we can easily come in and customize any of this to get as much detail as we want in. So you've seen now not only how to create templates using WooCommerce, but also how to augment the normal standard WooCommerce details with custom advanced custom fields, meta information, custom taxonomies, and so on. So with the previous video and this one, you should have a good understanding of how you can take your WooCommerce stores to another level using Elementor Pro and advanced custom fields, even just the free version of advanced custom fields. As always, all the links to everything I've covered are in the description below. And if you've got any comments, questions, or you want me to cover anything else, drop those in the comments section. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.